are the most iconic Chukka boots in the world, allegedly. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people say they're the most comfortable boots in the world, some people say they're super uncomfortable. So let's cut some in half and see what's going on inside of them. We're getting super close to that 100,000 subscriber mark and we're doing the $1,000 Jordans. When we get to that point, they're already ordered, they're on the way, I think. Um, but until then, we've got the Comfort version of the Vans and then also the Chuck Taylor 70s. These are supposed to be the better versions, the more premium version of the classic Chucks. So I think these are coming out Friday. So if you wanna see those and other videos and the $100,000, $1,000 Jordan, 100,000 subscriber, $1,000 Jordan video, consider liking and subscribing. So now to the boot. So first we'll go over what the boot is and then we'll talk about the sole and then to the leather and then we'll talk about my initial impressions for wearing them for a couple days and then we'll finally cut them in half and do kind of an analysis of what's inside the boot. So these are the Clark Desert boots. I got them in the tan leather. Usually you'd see these in kind of a suede, like the fuzzy looking leather, but I really like this leather and I thought I would review it since it's so different from all the other leathers that they usually offer. They're $130 online and they're made in Vietnam. And one of the, probably the most distinguishing feature of these boots that kind of set them apart from all the other styles of boots is that they have a crepe sole. And crepe soles are really interesting because they actually come from, or they're made from the raw material harvested from a rubber tree. A lot of people would assume that if you're harvesting something from a tree that it would kill a tree, but they actually have little taps that they've built into a tree that they can harvest up to 19 pounds of raw rubber material per tree per year, which is crazy. There are some pros and cons to this type of sole. One of the biggest pros with this type of crepe sole is they're really, really comfortable. It's a really soft, squishy compound. Um, they're pretty grippy unless it's wet and they're really affordable compared to like a really expensive leather sole or some of the other more expensive soles. But there are some cons associated with it. One of them being that it gets a little slippery when it's wet. These don't last quite as long as a really hard, dense rubber and sometimes you can lose chunks of the heel or certain areas if you hit it wrong on a rock or if you're not being careful with these soles. So that's something to consider if you're considering these boots. These look like shoes to me. I don't even know why they call them boots. Do you guys consider these boots or shoes? Because to me, they look like shoes. I guess they've got a heel, so maybe that makes them a boot. And now to the leather. So this is their tan leather. It's, a, it's either a full grain or top grain leather. If you look at the cross section, you can see a little bit of the grain in there which is nice. I think it's a pretty good leather actually for the price of these boots. I think it's a chrome tan leather and it would be considered a pull-up leather. And being a pull-up leather, it's gonna age really nicely. It's gonna develop a nice patina with age. Pretty water resistant because there's, there's so much wax and oil forced into the leather. It doesn't take as much conditioning. It doesn't take as much care because it's it's kind of a self-conditioning leather. And a lot of the scratches you get in, in this leather, you can pretty easily buff out with just a little bit of pressure. One question I always get is like, what is pull-up leather? And a lot of people think it's a type of leather, a type of tanning, but it's more of just a characteristic that can be in basically any type of leather. And all it really means is that when you bend or stretch or pull a piece of leather, that the leather lightens up. And the reason it does that is there's so much wax and oil worked into the leather that when you bend it or pull it, so those waxes either separate or rise to the surface or cause some discoloration, which usually isn't a permanent thing. And people like it because in the bends of the leather and like the toe creases, it gets lighter. And one unique thing about it is once you've got a discoloration from bending it or stretching it, you can put a little bit of pressure and friction on it, heat up those oils and it re-separates and or brings it back to the surface or whatever's happening on the inside and the color kind of returns. Now to the construction of these boots. So this is a stitch down construction where instead of having a separate piece be the welt, the upper is actually rolled out and kind of flanged out and then that is stitched to the insole. There's some pros and cons to this. Some of the pros are it's a cheaper and faster way to build a pair of shoes or boots, but some of the cons are once you've worn that out, since it's the upper is part of the welt, the shoe or boot's pretty much worn out. Unlike a, a typical boot with a separate piece being the welt, once that welt's worn out, all you do is stitch a new welt on and you're good to go. So these don't have as much longevity as like a typical Goodyear welted boot. So that kind of brings us to my initial impression of these. And a lot of people say these are super comfortable, but 
These were so uncomfortable for me right off the bat. And I think I know why they're uncomfortable. I think it has to do with this little sock liner in here. And I'll show you that when we get it cut in half. And another thing that it might be causing that is these don't have a shank, or at least they don't seem like they have a shank. It shouldn't have been like that if it has a shank. Um, another thing I noticed was I got a lot of heel slip in these and I think they run a little bit large. I sh probably should have got a half a size down, but I still think you're gonna have a lot of heel slip in these because they, they're not really, they're more like slippers rather than boots. Like you, even though you can tie it right here, you're not really making the boot any tighter. So unless you've got really big ankles, you know, these aren't gonna be really tight boots. And I think most people just slip these on and off anyway. I do like how simple these boots are though. It's just two pieces on the upper, stitched to a uh, insole, and then just a layer of crepe rubber on the outsole. So now to answer any of the other questions and to see what's inside of this, we need to cut it in half. So let's cut it in half. Cutting the sole was really interesting, so let's see what's inside. So pretty similar to what I expected to see on the inside, it's basically just a layer of fiberboard and then two layers of the crepe sole with the bigger heel block layer of the crepe sole that makes the heel. And then you see this little layer of foam on the sock liner. I think that's where all that discomfort on my heel was coming from because it's a pretty pretty steep drop down from that foam down to the fiberboard and I'm sure once it's worn in it's pretty comfortable but the first couple days of wearing it was really bothering me. And to see what else is going on inside of here I'm going to tear out the rest of this so we can see if there's anything else hiding inside there but it's pretty apparent there's no shank in here especially now that it's cut in half.
All right, I got the upper torn apart. I could not get the insole separated from the crepe midsole. It's really well stuck on there and uh, really no surprises in here anywhere. I think there's a few ways that it could, this boot could be improved, but for the price point, I don't think you should expect that. Maybe if this was a $200 boot, you would expect some of these improvements. But one thing I would do is either add a shank or make this a complete wedge sole, which Clark's already has a wedge sole version of this. So if you're trying to choose between the wedge sole and the heel, get the wedge sole, it's gonna be more comfortable. I really don't like this little pad for the heel of your foot. It's gonna make the boot more uncomfortable for the first few days. And in the long run, it's not gonna make really any difference. So I'd like to see them remove that. But the leather is really good. I'm really impressed with this leather. For 130 bucks, it's a nice, pretty durable pull-up leather. I would say it's a full grain leather. You can see some of the natural characteristics in it. It doesn't look like it's been buffed. Um, it's a really pretty leather. It's got a really nice finish to it. And uh, I'm surprised they, didn't, they don't sell this boot for $200. Not saying it's worth $200, but a lot of times you see brands really relying on their brand to sell a boot rather than the boot selling the boot. So I think this is a fair price boot. I think it's there's some ways to improve it, for, but for the price, you know, it's not bad. Quickly before we go, I'll show you just in case you didn't watch the why a boot needs a shank video, why this boot needs a shank. Okay, so if I take my solid steel, I use this as a jeweler's anvil, and this probably weighs 10 pounds, and I roll this over top of this area where there's no support of the shank, you can see the entire boot collapses. And the reason you need a shank in there is without the support of a shank, that little gap area just collapses and you get all that pressure right on your heel where the heel stops. Versus if it was a wedge sole, you'd have even pressure all the way through, or if there was a shank supporting it, you wouldn't have that drop off creating that pressure point on your heel. So let me show you one with a shank, if that doesn't roll off the table. Okay, we got these $500 RM William boots with a composite shank. As you can see, when I roll this weight over top of that, that gap area, it doesn't really deform as much and you've got a lot of support there. So that's why you need a shank or a wedge sole in your Clarks if you want to be comfortable. But if not, it is what it is. I'm sure you're happy with them. So that pretty much wraps up the Clarks Desert Boot. I think they're a pretty decent boot for the price. And if you have them, let me know what your experiences are with them. Do you have any of that pressure point right at the heel where there's no support from the shank. Um, let me know what you thought of this video and consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, you might as well do it. It's just a couple clicks anyway. So thanks so much for your support. See ya. Oh, and I forgot to mention all the people who are new patrons on the Patreon. I'm still working on getting all the reward tiers up, but you can still go and support these boot videos and help fund the boots. So the new patrons for this week are Alden J, Caleb H, Chris B, Dole, Jonas B, Maria B, Michael S, Philip S. So thank you guys for supporting even without a reward. See ya.